Mr. Nosey liked to know about everything that was going on. He was always poking his nose into other people's business. Mr. Nosey was the sort of person who, if he came upon a locked door, couldn't resist looking through the keyhole to see why the door had been locked. Mr. Nosey was the sort of person who, if he found an unopened letter addressed to somebody else, would simply have to open it to find out what was inside. Mr. Nosey was the sort of person who, if he was sitting reading his paper on a train, would much rather read the paper of the person sitting next to him. Naturally, as you might well imagine, Mr. Nosey was not very popular. People did not like the way in which Mr. Nosey would peek and pry into their affairs. They did not like it at all. But did that stop Mr. Nosey peeking and prying? It did not. Mr. Nosey lived in a funny, tall, thin house in a place called Tittletown. The people of Tittletown decided that Mr. Nosey was becoming much too nosy. And so they held a meeting to discuss what to do about him. We must find some way of stopping his being so nosy, said old Mr. Chips, the town carpenter. That's right, said Mrs. Washer, who ran the Tittletown laundry. He needs to be taught a lesson. If only we could think of a way to stop him poking his nose into everything, said Mr. Brush, the painter. And then a small smile spread over his face. Listen, he said, grinning. I have a plan. All his friends gathered round to listen to his plan. The following morning, Mr. Nosey was out walking along Tittletown High Street when he heard somebody whistling behind one of the closed doors. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself, and tiptoeing up to the door, he quietly <coughs> opened it and peeped in. A splash went a very wet paintbrush right on the end of Mr. Nosey's nose, covering it with bright red paint. Oh dear, I am so sorry. <laughs> said Mr. Brush, who was painting the inside of the door. Poor Mr. Nosey had to go straight home and try to remove the red paint, which was very difficult and rather painful. <laughs> Mr. Brush, Mr. Brush chuckled to himself. The plan had begun. The following day, Mr. Nosey was walking past the laundry when he heard someone laughing on the other side of the wall. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself. And, standing on tiptoe, he looked over the wall. <laughs> Snap! Went a clothes peg, right on the end of Mr. Nosey's nose. Oh dear, oh I am sorry. <laughs> Said Mrs. Washer, who was hanging up clothes on a washing line on the other side of the wall. Poor Mr. Nosey removed the clothes peg and went off down the street feeling extremely sorry for himself and for his poor red nose. Mrs. Washer, Mrs. Washer chuckled to herself. The plan was working. The next day, Mr. Nosey was going past a fence when he heard hammering. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself. Creeping very quietly to the end of the fence, he peeped round. Bang! Went a hammer right on the end of Mr. Nosey's nose. Oh, oh dear, oh, I, I am sorry, <laughs> said old Mr. Chips, who was nailing up a loose plank in the fence. Poor Mr. Nosey had to go home immediately and bandage his poor red sore nose. Mr. Chips grinned a broad grin. The plan was working very well indeed. The following day, Mr. Nosey was walking in the woods when he heard someone sawing wood. I wonder what's going on here, he thought to himself, and crept up behind a tree. He was just about to peer out from behind the tree, when it suddenly occurred to him that if he did, 
something very nasty might happen to his nose. And so he went on his way without being nosy. Behind the tree with a saw raised in his hand stood Mr. Hurd, the farmer. When he saw that Mr. Nosey had gone on his way without being nosy, he laughed and laughed <laughs> and laughed. The plan had worked. Mr. Hurd hurried off into Tittletown to tell everybody. The plan really had worked. Because after that, Mr. Nosey stopped being nosy and soon became very good friends with everybody in Tittletown. And that really is the end of the story. Except to say that if you were ever tempted to be as nosy as Mr. Nosey used to be, you'd better expect one thing. A, a very sore nose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.